Welcome to episode two of this podcast series on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. If you haven't listened to episode one, we recommend you do that before listening to this episode, as we'll be building on a lot of what was said before. Let's take a closer look at the context surrounding Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Let's start with Mary Shelley herself. Born the child of Mary Wollstonecraft, who many believe to be the first feminist thinker, and William Godwin, a philosopher and novelist, she would have been raised in a very intellectual and challenging home. It was an impressively forward-thinking family. Mary's mother wrote a treatise called A Vindication of the Rights of Woman that was published in 1792 and is considered one of the earliest works of feminist philosophy, arguing that women should have the same fundamental rights as men. Mary's father's novel, The Adventures of Caleb Williams, is also considered the first mystery novel. So there's plenty of evidence that the Godwin family had a way of looking at the world that was well ahead of their time. The period in which Shelley lived, the Romantic period, was a very interesting one. Characterised by disillusionment with the established orders in both society and nature, Romantics strongly rejected the ordered, structured and emotionally stunted approach of those who had come before them. Instead, they opted for more emotion, more wonder, seeking out a return to the natural world that had been pushed away by the earlier Enlightenment movement. During the Romantic period, Gothic writing was one of the genres that rose to popularity. It's perhaps not surprising that it became popular considering events at the time. Gothic writers sought to uncover the dark side of human progress, often through the lens of major disruptive events. The Industrial Revolution, which saw Europe turning away from rural life and moving more and more into cities, offered one such lens, as did the French and American revolutions. These key disruptive moments, which featured people sometimes literally throwing out the accepted way of doing things, were the perfect breeding ground for Gothic thought and writing. Revolutions were also taking place in science. The advent of anatomical science and the discovery of electricity were hugely disruptive to accepted scientific thought at the time. Therefore, it's not surprising that both of these themes are of crucial importance to Victor Frankenstein in the novel. These are the tools he uses to first create his monster and bring it to life. In part, Frankenstein can be read as a warning against the dangers of industrialization and what can happen when innovation and scientific advancement are allowed to progress unchecked, with no thought as to the consequences. These fears would have resonated particularly strongly at the time, fueled by massive social anxiety around civil unrest, the rising middle class, and the earth-shaking discoveries being made by scientists. Remember how we mentioned Prometheus in the last episode? The book's complete title, Frankenstein or The Modern Prometheus, makes it clear that the novel is, at least in part, an examination of what happens when we uncover knowledge we aren't prepared for, or not supposed to discover. There were plenty of scientists making Promethean discoveries when Shelley was alive, anatomy, blood transfusions, and electricity being just a few of them. And Frankenstein harnesses the social anxiety around these discoveries to create discomfort in its readers, asking the question, what could this mean for our way of life? So, there were plenty of scientific and social influences weighing on Shelley when she wrote Frankenstein, but the novel is not without literary influences. The novel shares similarities with a poem by the famous writer Johann Goethe called Faust that was published in 1808. In it, a German scholar makes a pact with the devil in exchange for absolute knowledge. Just like Frankenstein, Faust dies disillusioned with the knowledge that he first sought out, and the poem suggests that it's better to accept that there are some things which are beyond you in life. Mary Shelley's literary influences were not only the product of readings, however. Mary was embroiled in a love affair with the poet Percy Shelley, who she eventually married. Percy was one of the major romantic poets in England. 
and although he only received real acclaim after his death, his writing no doubt had an influence on Mary. Percy was also close friends with Lord Byron, the literary bad boy of his time. Another key member of the Romantic movement, Byron was a constant source of energy and sometimes frustration to those around him. Spending as much time as she did with Percy and Lord Byron, Mary Shelley would have been exposed to revolutionary romantic thinking, and that thinking in turn made its way into Frankenstein. So, Shelley took her inspiration from science, romanticism, revolution, and the Gothic tradition. Knowing what you do now about these areas, what do you think we can expect to find when we read Frankenstein? Where do you expect she will place emphasis? And what kind of a message do you think Frankenstein will seek to promote? Always keep these contexts in mind when analysing Frankenstein, and be careful to identify when the novel goes against the thinking of the time, as well as when it aligns with it. Both are crucial to an excellent analysis. That's it for this episode. In the next podcast of the series, we'll be taking a closer look at the structure and form of the novel itself, and considering how that structure influences our understanding of the text. See you next time.